in India in the year 2020, road accidents killed more people than the COVID virus. Even today, car drivers in India face life-threatening odds. They are seven times more likely to be killed in a car accident than the drivers in the US. And the situation is even worse in other developing countries across Asia and Africa. According to the World Health Organization, even though developing countries have only about 60% of the world's vehicles, they account for more than 90% of the 1.2 million deaths that occur every year due to road accidents. Meanwhile, in the US, we are seeing automakers race to build level three, level four, level five autonomy into their vehicles. Wait, what are these levels I'm talking about? You might ask. Driver assistance technologies are broadly classified into six levels of autonomy, ranging from level zero to level five. The car can perform basic tasks like lane departure warning in level zero, can perform adaptive cruise control in level one, and can perform highway assist features in level two, and can perform much more complicated maneuvers in level three to level five, which is fully automated driving. This is the number of road accidents that can be prevented at every level compared to having no driver assistance. As you can see, the number of accidents go down as you move higher and higher up the levels. But one thing I'd like to point out is that the biggest marginal gains are at level zero and level one. Something as simple as level zero and level one autonomous technology can help reduce accidents by almost 30%. And there are diminishing returns of going higher and higher. From a point of purely trying to maximize the number of lives saved, automakers should spend the efforts towards deploying level zero, level one, and perhaps even level two technologies before moving higher up the ladder. By doing so, we can positively impact at least 5 million lives every year. That's by reducing deaths, injuries, and other economic losses. At this point, some of you might be wondering, especially if you follow the news, are these technologies robust enough for us to depend on them? We've been promised a safe commute for many years now, yet we run into problems like this. The industry takes a step forward, but then a step back. Currently, automakers are facing immense overheads in retraining and testing their algorithms as they scale across cities even within the US. This is because the car may have learned how to drive based on aspects that are unique to the city it's initially deployed in, and so it will not scale well for other environments. And how can we solve this? An analogous development in recent times is ChatGPT in the field of AI. And I asked this ChatGPT, what makes you so capable? <laughs> it told me that its capability stems from the extensive training on the diverse range of texts and data sources that has been trained on. Drawing on this analogy of ChatGPT, we need to use data from all across the world to improve the driver assistance technologies. Currently, the data we have corresponds primarily to a few sources in the US and Europe. This lack of volume of data from multiple geographies is where the problem lies. And the solution to that is Indian roads. <laughs> Indian roads are full of edge cases. Sometimes they're like this, and sometimes they're like this. <laughs> But what they offer is much greater diversity in objects, vehicles, and driving patterns on the road, which are arguably much more challenging than the roads here in the US, and hence are a source of rich data. The opportunity is the same across many other developing countries. 
deploying level zero and level two technologies will not only help save lives, but it will also enable automakers to collect critical data. The data from the cameras and sensors in level zero and level two technologies can be used to train state-of-the-art level three to level five technologies, which will enable vehicles equipped with these technologies cope with potential situations they may face on the road. Moreover, global automakers can easily introduce level zero automation and collect data through something as simple as a smartphone mounted on the dashboard of your car. And that can provide prompts to the driver on how to drive. Or global automakers can choose to partner with local established automakers in India to provide level one and level two technologies. Or they can choose to deploy their own fleets on Indian roads for much more advanced data collection and driver assistance. India is the third largest car market in the world behind the US and China, with over 320 million vehicles registered as of 2022, making it a place for both high demand and a major source for data. So I urge the automakers to not only save lives by democratizing their technologies, but also to improve their technologies by being the first to enter these new markets. And I urge the engineers and the technologists to consider unconventional places like India while looking for solutions. And I urge the governments in these developing economies to push automakers to adopt driver assistance technologies. By taking these steps, we can cut down on road accidents by 30%, especially in developing countries, which face the misfortune of disproportionately higher fatality rates. In this period of extensive activity in autonomous vehicles, and more in general, AI, we are at a crucial juncture faced with two choices. On one hand, we can choose to continue on the current path of increasing the inequality between the haves and the have-nots that has grown for the past many years now. Or we can choose a future where we bridge this gap while advancing the technologies. I urge you all to choose the latter and consider solving the, the hard challenges in developing economies to improve millions of lives around the world. Thank you.